Welcome back to Nightcap Chat, the pop culture podcast like all things comic books, video games, movies, TV shows, and more. Today we are talking the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier and what's going on in pop culture today. I'm Blade O'Neill. I'm Ken Brown with our wonderful dog playing ball during the podcast today. Right. <laughs> I'm Lance O'Neill. And before we dive into it, I just want to Take a second to thank you all for taking the time to listen to Nightcap Chat. Without you, this magic wouldn't be happening. We wouldn't have shirts coming in this Friday. Nice. Or in our second batch, too. So, well, we'll see what happens there. Um, but yes, we really appreciate your support. And if you if you are enjoying it, you feel so inclined, we appreciate it if you share it on social media, tell your friends about it so we can continue to grow and continue to bring you even better things. So Ken Ken's back this week. Yeah. Right. I think that was that was that last week you weren't here? Everything's yeah, everything's a blur. Yeah, thank you for the week off, you guys. I apologize. I got caught up with stuff at the store. It's uh we had a huge couple of huge large shipments come in late last week. And so we had to kind of get everything caught up as fast as possible. So sorry, I missed you guys, dude. I heard Steve did awesome with you guys. I mean it's always fun listening to you guys. <laughs> When, when I get to actually just be a, a guest, or not a guest, but like a fan listening, yeah. it's still kind of fun mm-hmm. hearing everything there too as well. And uh, I, I missed out on talking about Boondock, Boondock Saints with you guys. Oh! Uh, Would have been my choice of Irish movies. So. Love it. Um, you know, and that's, uh, there's my little late two cents, one week late, <laughs> and a four lever or four clove shamrock short. So happy St. Patrick's Day belated to you guys. Slancha. Thank, Thank you, Ken. That's, that's awesome. And I, and admittedly, when I was coming with that list, I was, I was a little late to, to think of Boondock Saints. I was like, oh, how can I forget? Um, but that was last week. This week, all kinds of things going on. Um, I'll, like, I'll let you start, Ken. You you got some stuff going on. We got some we got some DC comics coming in, right? You, yeah, something? DC's uh, DC starting their Infinite Frontiers now, and uh, there's uh, they introduced Red X for the first time during Future State last mm. month, mm-hmm. and uh, people have been buzzing like crazy. Who is this Red X character? And uh, Teen Titans Academy starts tomorrow, mm-hmm. and Teen Titans Academy starts the more or less the the road to whoever this character is being revealed and more or less as i won't say his origin story but uh just uh you know picks up a bag jumps on the boat with the other teen titan academy and it recruits because i guess they're kind of turning it more into like an x-men book it feels like now and uh we're gonna find out who this red x is that died at the end of their future state number two which i thought was a little bit melodramatic of you're introducing this brand new character in a two-part miniseries during future state hmm. yet you're showing that he dies a hero in his first two appearances so yeah that's how i guess a hero's death is always the best kind of death supposedly but why would you show that you're killing off this character when you're first introducing him and then you're going to go into his origin afterwards which starts tomorrow in teen Titans cabin number one which looks really cool i gotta admit two great covers and um jamal campbell did a killer b cover and you can, uh, you know, take a look at that. I actually did a little video earlier today. I think you saw Blade. I saw you. Get the I did see because I follow Drawn to Comics on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. That's yes. at Drawn to Comics, all one word, on yes. Facebook, so I'm doing Instagram, DC and Twitter. Sneak peeks because I'm there on Mondays trying to get it ready. Yeah. And so I decided to start doing videos to get little sneak peeks of what's coming in on Tuesdays for DC Books. I I, I love that because I mean, even if I only care a little bit, I'm like, oh, hey, what's Ken gonna say? I'm like, oh. It's more than just a picture and description, like, and, you know, as somebody who, who works in, you know, video production, you know, on both sides of the microphone there, I, I see firsthand, like, it's just so much easier to watch a little clip than like, I don't want to read this. And that's, that's just where we're at. Like, yeah, let's be real. That makes it easy. So let me get this straight. And uh, I want to make sure I'm, I'm understanding this. This character is killed off already. Yes, which is kind of a and now this is a at the end of the book. okay, and now this is a flashback. Yes, now the new series is in current day, and the future state was supposed to be an undisclosed time in the future of the future of uh, the being future of today, and then being freed by Nightwing, who now got a Deathstroke mask, 
that he uh, is part Nightwing, part Deathstroke, and more or less this person is released by Dick Grayson to help go fight the battle against the major villain of the two-part story they had in Future State. Okay. Okay, so nobody knows who this character is. Yes. As of right now, he's a nominist. Okay. And that's the that's the, the carrot for reading the story. Oh. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the other interesting part of that is with the whole Teen Titans thing is Raven, who's in the Teen Titans, was introduced in the Fortnite game for the Battle Pass. Hmm. So you can unlock her skin. Comic book Raven? Um, yes. Cool. I can do it. And there's two different variations of the skins, like a newer look that she had, and then like mm-hmm. her classic look that you can unlock, which is interesting. Um, but, you know, that's kind of interesting, the timing on that. And there's also, like, three weeks ago, they introduced an alien skin. And Alien was in the Marvel comics, right? Oh, Alien yes. as in... As in Alien. Alien. Yeah. I don't, I, alien don't, I don't know how to be more skin. specific than that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. The Alien versus Predator <laughs> Alien. So I find that interesting. They keep just doing things at the same time well, all the comics are Well, that doing. has to do... There, there's something weird going on with Alien, because there's those Alien variant covers coming out soon, or yes. are they coming out? Or I mean, Ken knows. Yeah, they're already out. The Alien comic series starts at the end of this month. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it comes out tomorrow, Susan was Wednesday, saying. Wednesday, Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. I'm sorry. Rats for Wednesday. Well, tomorrow so is Alien Wednesday. Comic right. series. <laughs> the what? I said tomorrow is Wednesday when this comes oh, out anyway. Right. So yeah. tomorrow. You know, so tomorrow. right is relative. Yes. So, yeah, this Wednesday, Aliens comes out if i remember correctly it's karen gillen and salvador la roca oh wow the creative talent on it yeah and uh, if you've ever been an x-men fan you remember salvador la roca's artwork from extreme x-men from x-men oh. legacy mm-hmm. of course uncanny of course. x-men yep. he's been a long-term x-men fan and has worked on so many other projects too but he's gonna be drawing the aliens comic which is oh. pretty epic so but what is what is it about raven then or is it just as simple as yes. this re-release and plus I think we're coming up on season three of Titans maybe? Maybe it's all of those things? I, I don't I mean I don't really I don't really know enough about it to to really comment. I mean the only other thing that I saw in like the as far as like the Fortnite aspect of it was like in the description of her thing, it just talked it only talked about her dad. And like because like every character has their description Ooh, and it talked about her dad is like you Trigon. Know, huge demon or whatever well, i don't remember the, the yeah, exact but he's, verbiage that they use but he conquers other dimensions right so is that the yeah, next event is tr- instead of galactus we're gonna have trigon come and invade Fortnite, and everyone's awesome. gonna have to stop trigon and they're gonna team up with the dc characters so that's why we're starting with raven i mean that would be pretty cool that would be it'd be interesting and does this eventually lead to like another marvel again like we've been saying a marvel, <laughs> marvel dc versus- crossover somehow <laughs> It always comes well, back to that. Fortnite would be the perfect land to do it in, though, wouldn't it, Lance? Yeah, I mean, it's an alternate universe. It's it's a forever changing landscape. I mean, you guys. I mean, after this, I, I think I'll, I'll I'll share with you the video of like the beginning of because uh, every time Fortnite does a, a a new season, there's always a video of like what's happening in Fortnite world, right? Um, and dude, this video was crazy. Like, just like. Just the the properties that they have to use in this video, you see Alien, you see Predator, you see Terminator, you see um, all these different like huge characters all fighting like Fortnite people, and it's like leading up to this huge event to lead off the new season. It was just it's just so crazy that there's a game out there that's able to do all this and have Marvel skins, and it's just it's just insane. Wow, that, that's that's, that's pretty like- crazy. It, it it feels like the beginnings of a modern day Secret Wars. Huh. Like that. Yeah. Battle World has become Fortnite in its own way. And like whether I, I don't know why they haven't had like a Beyonder versus I don't know who would be the DC equivalent of the Beyonder. Do you guys have any idea who the DC equivalent of the Beyonder would be? Um <sighs> He's such a weird character, it's kind of hard to yeah, or Has DC like, done something like that, like Battle World? 
How about uh, Mr. Mixoplex? Oh, oh Mixoplex? About- yeah. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Would would Brainiac count because of the convergence they did back in the day? I'm not I'm not familiar because, enough with that. Because Brainiac was the one behind the convergence a few years ago, but that was kind of so ill received. People don't even really talk about it anymore. Uh, I I don't want to derail this, <laughs> but I read I was reading about the Beyonder in a way. Um, yes. Just a few nights ago. I I don't know if it was like a partial retcon, but did you did any of you guys read the thing where like the three Beyonders came and killed the living tribunal? That was and when they killed the living tribunal, they killed him on the moon. And so in every universe, the living tribunal's body was found on the moon on the moon so never because the living tribunal there's only one of them so since he killed him he died in every universe wow that's crazy and this only was recently that, happened was that part of the original sin storyline well that was a watcher that was killed wasn't it yeah that was the watcher it was just uatu i thought or just, yeah. yeah yeah this this was the beyonder so anyway i want to look more into that because that blew my mind is that uh, still like like what universe was this in? Well, I mean, it, obviously it's in every universe. It was dead, only, right? yeah. So is but this it still was, like a thing? It was only a few years ago and I can't figure, I can't find any later appearances of the living tribunal. So I don't know what happened. That would in also in a sense kill him in the Marvel universe. Yeah. In the MCU. The MCU. Yeah. Wow. That's during the Hickman run of Avengers, wasn't it? I I read this so whole lot. Lo- about the creators on it? Yes, but I was I was tired, and I was just one of those things where I was falling down a rabbit hole, and I was just doing the research on the storyline. I thought I, I don't want to say the wrong thing, so I so I I won't. But it was it was recently. But it was, yeah, it was I know, like that, I didn't get a chance to read it, but I saw the Beyonder showed up on a cover, like sitting Indian style, playing with like toy Avengers uh, during the Jonathan Hickman run a few years back. And as I said too, I never had a chance to sit down and read it. But that was kind of fascinating. I'm saying like, oh, the Beyonder's back. But well, never this, got around to reading it this wasn't the Beyonder. This okay. was three, like, three Beyonders, and they looked yeah, like well. these aliens. Um, that was in. It was during the time runs out storyline. Okay, so that was right before Secret Wars. So is um. I guess the the Beyonders killed the Living Tribunal along with all the Celestials, and they also killed like the abstract entities, including Eternity, Infinity, Lord Chaos, Master Order, um, and there was this whole thing with like Molecule Man as well. Like I think they used Molecule Man to to stop him because, like from what I understood, like, they, or no, they were trying to like manipulate Molecule Man because they could make him like as like a bomb to like. Because they they make up Molecule Man in every in each different multiverse, okay. so they were trying to use that to like destroy different multi like crazy stuff. Um, yeah, because Molecule Man, Doctor Doom, and Doctor Strange created the second generation Secret Wars. Yep. Mm-hmm. And like that's that, how- everybody thought Doctor Doom was leader of the world. But go ahead, I'm sorry, Lance. Yeah, that's how Doctor Doom became God. Doctor Doom, you know, whatever he was like untouchable. Anyway, I just thought that was crazy. Um, but, uh, to kind of bring us back on track here for a second, before we dive into Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, I was interested in taking some, some guesses at, uh, at a Red X and Ken, you're the only one who read it. So like mine's going to be in a shot in the dark. Um, so I want to know if you have any, any idea on who, who this might be. My original thought it was going to be Damian Wayne. Okay. Because before Future State started, there was a storyline in the Teen Titans annual before mm-hmm. Future State started where Damian Wayne tried killing Destro. Oh. And uh, Batman and Robin, or Batman and his son, went to blows to try to, like, Batman tried to say, You can't do this. Do you know what I mean? This is against all codes of what we do. And, um, uh, you know, they started battling and Batman ripped the R 
off of his chest. He goes, then you are not a robber. And more or less, then he goes, I have to become something else then. And he just walks away from the Teen Titans and Batman. Hmm. And so there's a new Robin series starting up with Damian Wayne as Robin. Hmm. So I don't know, you know, this, this mystery person that's inside Teen Titans Academy appears to be a different person. Okay. But that was my first thought was like, okay, what's Damien going to become? You know, become okay. something different. And the Teen Titans cartoon, wasn't Dick Grayson, both Robin and Red X in that? Uh, I can't, here, here's my stupid answer. I can't speak to the first Teen Titans Go cartoon, but in Teen Titans, oh no, in Teen Titans, but in Teen Titans Go, that was the case. And I'm pretty sure yes. they based that off of that happening in the original show um so I, I believe that's correct and so that would be my guess it was like to do the twist different it's a different robin and i don't think it's tim drake either okay but it's uh or as i said too that was my first guess was like it was damian wayne becoming red x rather than dick grayson this time around last to you do you have a guess yeah i'm gonna do one a crazy one okay i hope i hope you're not stealing mine but go ahead you go first then. Okay. Okay. I'm basing this off of a little detail that Ken said in passing. Okay. Rose Wilson. That's interesting that you say that too, because that was a thought that was just going through my head. Like it, this is a red herring. You know, it's not. You think it's it's a guy. It's a you know it's a robin. You know, like wh- what else is going on here? You you mentioned the Deathstroke thing, so you know Rose Rose Wilson Ra- Ravager, right? Um, yes. super cool character. Like I, I wouldn't mind actually getting into her, um, her comics and stuff. Um, yeah, that's my shot in the dark. I'm not keeping up with DC. I'm not basing that on anything, but, but that death stroke mask there. Uh, um, Lance. Okay. Mine has like, it's going to have like literally n- no like reasoning. Just like, this is my guess to so take a guess. Okay. okay, and I'm gonna go with. This is not a crystal ball certified. <laughs> yeah, this is this is definitely not. But if hey, if it hits, then I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's just saying, but this will be right, no matter what you say. It's gonna be the right answer. But so how about the child it. of Superman, Lois Lane? Right, little Jonathan Kent. You know, <laughs> like instead of him stuff. being super, super boy, he's just you know he's Red X. Huh. That could be interesting too. They uh they did just do a story where now Jonathan Kent is Superman because when he was in the future with the Legion of Superheroes, he grew up inside of the future and is now back as an adult Jonathan Kent. And uh so but as the two like both he's fighting father and son side by side against some menace that's happening over in action comics and in superman right now hmm. but as the two timelines you know what i mean i said too there's in the dc universe right now timelines are not relevant so they can tell stories in any time frame they want so why not giving jonathan kent be red x for that time being as like someone that was imprisoned inside the future state they didn't show who it was but you know if super sun went off the rails you know, they, they would need to possibly lock him up and he'd do it voluntarily until he felt that it was safe for him to be out in the world again. Huh. Like maybe he was born and he didn't have powers, but he tried being like a superhero anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Wow, this this sounds really complicated. So like I don't even I don't even know what to say. Um so we'll see. We'll see if any of our predictions at all are are correct. Um so have you, speaking of super sons have you guys been watching that superman and lois tv show at all no no i'm not i'm not even sure i realized that was even on it's on cw right now it's it's uh. i thought it was going to be uh how would i say no interest whatsoever in watching it yeah but it's got a little bit of a smallville feel like 20 years later and, interesting uh, superman and lois have two sons that are twins and that's the first mm. time i've ever seen um that storyline inside of anywhere in the DC universe. And I'm kind of going, weird. man, like that. What, how, how can they make Superman different or, you know, likably different this time around? Did they and, name the kids? 
Yes, it's Jordan and what's the other one's name, Kim? Just Jonathan and Jordan. Weird. So and we know which of them is not going to make it. <laughs> yeah, one of them's got powers, and one of them's not going to. Jor- what? Jor- oh, Jorrell. Oh. The what? Jor- yeah, but don't, don't they call him Jordan Short? Don't yeah. They, yeah. Hmm. So it's more acceptable by human name standards to yeah. call him Jordan rather than Jorrell. Got it. If he's trying to hide his identity still, that they're may have any powers or anything like that but the one that's not supposed to develop powers you think develops powers and the one you think would develop powers doesn't have any powers yet but it all just kind of goes on that whole family aspect of things where finally we have if we found a flaw in superman and his flaw is trying to be a father that is still a good father and being a superhero at the same time so Hmm. it's a kind of an interesting thing to look at clark kent as a as a flawed human being as superman because he struggles as a parent which is kind of interesting uh, twist on the infallible clark kent superman stories they've done in the past i'm just calling it right now this uh it's gonna be some crazy twist where the second twin was just implanted there by brainiac or something and yes. brainiac becomes this Jorella kid and then he has to deal with that was never really his son and it's gonna be something crazy calling it now that but Brainiac's behind it I'm, t- I'm telling you i don't know i'm just making things up now uh i'm trying to be lance okay. he's, gonna be, he's gonna be the bizarro to the uh, his <laughs> oh my goodness wow. um, be awesome. yeah weird um yeah i didn't even know i mean i've heard about that show but i, I didn't know that it started um speaking of shows another marvel show has started uh, just just last week, and uh, two weeks after after one division, which was which was really good. Um, so this this I went in pretty blind. I I haven't been really watching the trailers. Like I saw like the first teaser, you know, but I I didn't know I didn't really know what most of this was going to be about. Besides that, Bucky and Falcon were in it, right, and. Captain America Shield was in it. Yes. And and I knew uh John John is it John John Walker, US agent. Um I knew that. But I was surprised by everything else because I did, I haven't been watching the trailers. So like that was cool. I mean what what did you guys think? I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was fun. That opening scene felt like you're watching the, you know, a real Marvel cinematic movie just like they did with WandaVision. Mm. Opening up with a great intense chasing through a mountainous desert mm-hmm. just it was, it was awesome i mean it was just a hook line and sinker grab you in within the first five minutes for the ride and it was just a a lot of new aspects of falcon i didn't you know they they they, they added so much more depth to the falcon than anything they've ever done before and the winter soldier too his ptsd that he deals with of still being the winter soldier and his memories. I mean, there was a lot of cool stuff in that first episode to kind of get you invested in where this is going, but I just can't wait to see where it goes because I said, I don't want to touch on every point because there's so much to touch on, but Lance, what do you think, dude? Uh, I I liked it a lot. I thought it was, I thought it was a great for a show. I think this is something that like if people watch and even if they're not like crazy into Marvel that they might enjoy it. Like if you like like a, like an NCIS, like a, like a, any type of like cop show, I feel like, you know, yes. almost where, you know, you're just looking for like, oh, oh, this is like, there's this case that they're working on. They need to figure out who these people are. I think it's, you know, has me intrigued and, you know, who are these people? Like, what, what's their deal? They explained a little bit, you know, what, what the reasoning is for their attacks and stuff. And, and what they did with Bucky is awesome, I think. Yes. Uh, it's, I was, I loved it. Yeah, the, the Bucky stuff I think was I found more interesting. Um I, I am glad they, they started developing Falcon. I I had a hard time being interested and caring. Like I felt like I needed like more of a reason to to care about this boat. I mean like I was just like, give up the boat, dude. And like, don't you know enough people that you can get alone? Like, I just like that to me just felt so weak. Like, like, come on, like you're you were friends with Stark and like you, you can't figure it out. Plus you're that you're in the military and like 
there, there's gotta be something. So like, it was just so weak. Like I just, I really didn't buy it. Um, but then on that other side of the coin, like Bucky, he was, he was really dealing with stuff and even his stuff had a callback, um, to, I think it was civil war when Tony Stark is choking him out and he's, he's mad that he killed his parents. And he's like, do you even, do you even remember them? And he says, I remember every single one of them. That right. one little line, like it's, it's a whole show now. Like yeah, that's know, how that, well planned this is. That whole thing. Like I literally at the end of the, the by that, like one of that last scenes, I almost cried. It was so good. It was so sad. What, what was so, what was? When he's on the date with the with the girl. Oh, oh, yes. And because, she's talking yeah. about the old man and he goes up and he gives the man money because mm-hmm. he knows that he's the one that killed his son and yes. he, he wants to tell him, but he doesn't want to tell him. Yeah. It's so sad and it was just that like, was what sad. a inner struggle. And uh. I, I wasn't that far in it, but I, I was like, oh, wow, that's sad. <laughs> I hope he doesn't tell him. <laughs> yeah. But you know, and he's got to. He's on his list. It's It's on his list. He circled his name. It's one of yes. the people that he has to talk to, to, to try to move past and become normal again, hopefully. Like the Falcon family thing, I, I can kind of, I said too, I thought they did that as realistically as they could. Yeah, he was a famous soldier. That's the thing too they're trying to hit on. It's just because you're an Avenger doesn't mean that you're a multimillionaire like Tony Stark. Yes. No, like I, I, I got He was that. gone for five years without mm-hmm. any type of money expenditure and... Just because the world moved on without them, Mm -hmm. there is still repercussions of being gone for five years that the world hasn't learned how to deal with yet either. It's like, you don't, you haven't done anything with any kind of credit for five years. How can we as a bank lend you that money? Yeah. And that was kind of like an interesting thing. He was so excited to get the banker to be in front of the Falcon. Let's get selfies Mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And the Falcon was kind of like, dude, this is like a joke, man. Do you know, it's like that. Yes, I did do all this stuff. You can't even lend me any money because I was off the grid for five years because something Thanos did. And it was like kind of like a real kind of family struggle because you're right. The sister says, dude, it's time to move on. It's like, we don't need this anymore. We, we, the parents are gone. They'll forgive us. It's, you know, it's, it's something Falcon wants so badly to maintain that heritage. And his rest of his, you know, his sister is like ready to move on and has the doubt in it. So, it's 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 a subplot that doesn't need to be there, but it makes the superhero element of their life much more human. A little bit like when Hawkeye went back to his farm to be mm-hmm. with his family. That was like the very similar type of feeling too. It's like, yes, these people are heroes and they're out saving the world, but there is the other side of the story, like Bucky dealing with his PTSD and Falcon wanting to save what he cares for the most, more than anything else besides saving the world is his parents' legacy that's struggling right now because he's got this guilter's remorse of being around the world, saving everybody but yeah. his own family at home. So I thought that was kind of a little bit more in-depth than what, uh, do you know what I mean? I guess I, I hate saying it, like a, you know, a little bit more depth than we're giving credit for on it. Yeah. Okay. You're, yeah. I, I can see that. You're, I agree you're making with me both feel sides, a little, but a little, I, a little I, I do feel like, I mean, you can't just like call Pepper Potts and be like, "Hey, you know, yeah, you're worth a hundred billion dollars. I I need like you know, three hundred grand." And he's no, trying to I use the right hand right now. I mean, he they they may go that route. I hope they don't. But you know, he's trying to do it the legitimate way right now, right? And go with the fact of like that. Hey, let's try to make this work. And he may go that route. That's me how it ends. I mean, it is the easy way out. Is hey, let's see what's the Tony Stark fund. But uh, he he may be kind of like embarrassed to do something like that too as well because that's not the 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 most chivalristic way of going about saving his family. Yeah, more well, more he, than asking a superhero or someone for money. Like I was, I was more the military thing for me. Yeah, that like like you had. That's it true. seemed like there was more options. But I I know as as somebody who's dealt with you know banks being pain in the ass and loans, like it is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Like what do you mean? Like I've I've, I've never missed a, a, a payment on my house or, or my car. And like, like, why are you giving me a bad rate? Like, I'm just trying to buy another car. Like I've never defaulted on anything, <laughs> you know, yes. like, like give me, give me a break. So, I mean like that, that is certainly very relatable to the everyday person or like banks aren't here to help anybody. 
Like they're just here to screw you out of money. And that's a fact. And I'm not going to argue about it. Uh, but yeah, yes, that's, that's very relatable. Maybe he shouldn't have given up the shield for free, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was more bothersome to me too, is the fact of like that he didn't want anything to do with being Captain America in a way. I, I thought that was weird yes. too. By him giving it up, the government said, oh, Captain America's done. But then first chance they had, they got another Captain America ready to go. Yeah. And now he's oh. mad and like, oh no, I want to do it. Yeah, well, well he respects Steve Rogers so much. He can't see not even him doing it, even though Steve gave him the, the how would you say it? The, the go ahead. Like, hey, dude, yeah. you're the only he person passed the torch. that can have this besides me. Yeah, pass the torch. But for the government to kind of say, oh, we don't need a Captain America. And then next thing you know, it's like as soon as he gives up the shield, let's pass it on to somebody else. It's, it's, it's a smack in the face to, to Sam Wilson because it pretty much clearly tells them they didn't want him being Captain America. Yep. And his whole, that whole thing, that whole speech and everything, that was such a, a pretty cool setup for the the War Machine TV show because he was sitting there listening to it and you they were kept panning over to to Don Cheadle and you could tell that he's like, he, he feels like now he should be taking up the mantle because Iron Man's gone, that, that I should be that person just because he's gone, there, there uh, needs to be that person there. So I, I, I like that, that, that little sentiment there that like they were both standing there listening to the speech and they both could relate to what they were saying. Wow. Well. And and there and speaking of Don Cheadle, surprise cameo. Like, uh, I mean, did yes. you guys know? Like, I I had no idea. No, I, I was like, oh wow, that's Rhodey. He's here. This is great. And yes, absolutely. This this is totally setting up, or going to start to set up armor wars. You know, like I mean, that's that's got to be what's what's happening here. Um, yeah. And I I guess I also just feel too like they're they're dragging out Sam becoming Falcon. Like he already handed on the shields. Yeah. And then now it goes away and I was going to go get it again. Like, let's just, let's do it. Like, I want to, like, I want to see it. Like, let's, let's do this. I want, I want to see everybody's Captain America. I mean, like we've, we've got him. Yeah. Bucky should be Captain America at some point. Uh, even you, I mean, and we're getting us agent. Now we see, right. Uh, John, yes. John Walker. Am I, I feel like I'm saying that. Yeah, is it, John John, Walker. it is John Walker. Okay. Uh, I so, didn't know if I was talking about a whiskey or, or the, US agent. The, the, the general public is also like so confused. <laughs> this whole thing I there's know. so many memes and i almost feel bad and i almost feel like they didn't like because like how they did it with like the cliffhanger if it like it was this actually the good idea like is it good because you are having memes so people are like paying attention and they're gonna look it up maybe or is it bad because now it, it almost just makes the show look bad because they're like what what is this nonsense there's just it, another captain america no it was a really bad shot of him because everyone's yes, photoshopping was. the the, the nose. Uh, ed asner from up with a Captain America mask and saying like that's what he looks like, and I don't blame him because, uh, gosh, like it was a bad shot. He one of, one really of the goofy. funniest memes I've seen was a picture of Captain America, right, and a mm. picture of him, mm. and it says, "Uh, the picture that I saw when I bought on Wish versus what I got." Yes, yeah, <laughs> I I saw that one too. The, that's classic. The internet is ruthless. You know, something something's a little. A little weird looking, and and that's it. And WandaVision, you know, had their memes, especially with Blue Vision. Like Blue Vision with ears can't hurt you. Blue Blue Vision is not real. Blue Vision, and he's just there. It's terrifying. Uh, so it's it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I will give him the benefit of the doubt that that was just a really bad shot. <laughs> yes. I felt like when I was watching that scene that I was all of a sudden switched over to Amazon Prime watching The Boys. For oh, a second there. Interesting. And I'm kind of going, and go like, why does this feel like the boys all of a sudden? That this guy is, uh, oh gosh, dude. See, I'm like so focused on Winter Soldier or Captain America and Winter Soldier right now. Falcon and Winter Soldier. That um, I can't remember the name of the the, the main character in Homelander. The boys. Homelander, right? Homelander is the Captain America yes. Superman character. Yeah, it felt, it felt like a Homelander scene was happening right in front of me there inside the Falcon and Winter Soldier team Interesting. Series. Interesting. I, I could see that. Um, especially with... The corporate captain. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting uh, Interesting parallel there. I'm not sure where they're going with US Agent because, like I said, I, I haven't watched the trailer. So, like, I have no idea what's going to happen. And when... Um, and I, and I, made a, I made an honest mistake when... Um, they first mentioned 
the the flag smashers. Yes. Right. It was like, oh, flag smasher. Like I I know what that that character is, and flag smashers is, is I would argue, relatively obscure character. But I mean, a lot of Cap, Cap's rogue gallery is kind of obscure. I I made a mistake and I got Flag Smasher mixed up with um is it pronounced Citizen V or Citizen 5 from from Thunderbolts? I think they was Citizen V, but people I do call it Citizen v. 5 too. But Citizen V is what I've always been referred I to. I want to say in, he was recently in the Avengers like animated series and it was Citizen V. Okay. It was okay. what they said in the Well, series. well, I think if it's a more modern series, I would I would, you know, accept that then uh but citizen v you know Bar- baron zemo was was citizen v you know at least for a while yes. um yeah during the thunderbolts run. so i thought i thought we were setting up the thunderbolts until i because i googled it and then like i couldn't i was like oh no that's not that's not flag smasher and flag smasher was just this uh this captain america villain like i've never i'm sure i never even seen a i never read a comic book with with this character and it's just one of those you know obscure captain america villains like um um Arnim Zola, you know. Yeah. Um but a that that was cool. Was, a lot of what I was seeing was based off the Mark Grunewald run when Steve Rogers stepped down from being Captain America because he didn't agree with the government. Okay. Is when John Walker was replaced as Captain America. You yeah. know, that uh he was um oh man dude no he mad? was another government called the Super Patriot, if I remember correctly. Oh, oh, is that that's what it was? I, I yeah, John Walker was the Super Patriot for a few issues before he, like, within the first year after they introduced him, they mm-hmm. kind of set this up where Super Patriot was, like, another government superhero operative that helps, you know, obviously fight alongside Captain America, but it was more of a government design thing, again, mm-hmm. rather than, you know, Captain America just still being Captain America, yeah. but it was kind of more of a political move of the fact of like steve stopped believing in what they were asking him to do yeah and super patriot was the person that was kind of stepping in to do those things he mm-hmm. finally said like no dude this is, this is not the america i want to represent and he stepped he stepped down for being captain america and became the the captain for a while oh and that's then, what uh, it was that... they, they they made super patriot the captain america gotcha and captain got like a little gallery of d-man that he had and he had Falcon, D Man, or like his own little Avengers that he formed on his own. And uh, eventually um, he decided to become Captain America again. And I think there was a a battle between him and Red Skull where he finally became Captain America again afterwards because Red Skull did plastic surgery on his face to make him look like Steve Rogers to make Steve Rogers look bad. Oh my gosh. And then he was going to throw the the red dust. Steve Rogers' face and make Captain America look like Red Skull. It was kind of a dumb storyline. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it sounds like, she's like... <laughs> Captain America. Yeah, but then uh, you know, like uh, uh, eventually it was like you know, Captain America that was John Walker stepped down when Steve decided to become Captain America again. He became the U.S. agent, and they put him in the West Coast Avengers. Gotcha. Because Hawkeye started his own Avengers over in California. And that started the the whole rivalry of like, okay, we have a Captain America on the West Coast and a Captain America on the East Coast. Hawkeye was like, what the heck is this, dude? I started my own team, Avengers, that was government sanctioned. They kind of said like, hey, you need a, you, you, you need a Captain America on your team. You're not an Avengers without a Captain America team. The U.S. agent, John Walker, became the U.S. agent over in the West Coast Avengers. That's all I remember kind of in John Walker history in my own head. So wow. what's interesting about that is the first – uh, when 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 U.S. Agent comes in to uh, take over for the West Coast Avengers, yes, um, that's that that issue. Yes, Hawkeye gets mad. They get into an argument. Hawkeye leaves yes. the West Coast Avengers. That same issue is when the uh, the babysitter comes over and asks to 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 watch um, Wanda's kids, and she goes up into the room, and the kids aren't there, and she's like, "What is this lady talking about?" Yes. And that's when she talks to Wonder Man asking her to bring Vision back because they just recreated Vision. And that's when Wonder Man's like, no, I'm not going to put my 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 uh, my what? brain and everything I remember back into the Vision. And he leaves. So it's crazy that these two, both those storylines literally just line up with the 
with this weird. I think I think that's what's going on right now with these Marvel Cinematic Productions is they're looking at stories that are 35, 40 years old because who's going to remember them? But they were good, important parts of storytelling in 80s comic history. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these people that are producing these shows are kind of going, hey, this is good stuff that is not super rememberable in a lot of ways, but really good storytelling. Because Mark Grunewald wrote those Captain America stories. Obviously, John Byrne did that West Coast Avengers story. Those were some of the top writers working for Marvel during that time period. And so I see them actually right, Lance. They're pulling from that same era of comics at the same time, almost interacting, puzzle piecing with each other, storytelling wise. Wow. That's such a weird coincidence. And it may not be a coincidence, maybe on purpose. Yeah. I thought I thought he became nomad during that time, but but I guess I guess I was, was wrong. But it was was that pretty that was close? Jack Monroe became nomad. Oh, Jack Monroe Cap- became nomad. So Steve never became nomad. Steve, that was an earlier story where he stepped around, stepped away, because there was two times he stepped away. From oh, the- okay. So that's so I'm just mixing him up. Okay, I, I see what's yes. happening now. Yeah, because Steve Rogers did become nomad for a while too. Okay, and but that was from about ten years earlier. That was from gotcha. the 70s, stepped gotcha. away from being Captain America. Yeah. And, so uh, that and that's kind of interesting because they. Because I think like the way he looked in Infinity War was very like nomad, you know. Yes. So it's funny to see these little, like these Parallel. these stories that are that they're taking from like they're just out of order, you know. Like like yes. we had Civil War before the Infinity Gauntlet story, you know. So they're just kind of you know making whatever works. But it, this is its own universe, so like so it's okay, you know. You can't get too hung up on on, on little details like that. Um, how how neat. You know, one of my favorite things, and I, I feel like we glossed over it as is in the beginning, was GSP is was back as Batroc and it was awesome. Yes. yes dude. He was so he was such an underrated I I think underrated part of uh the Winter Soldier movie. And he was awesome. And like Batroc is Batroc the Leaper is such a stupid character. Like let's so cool. let's be real. He's so stupid. But GSP playing him as as a as a French guy because you know yes. Batroc is is French. It it was just it was just so perfect. And GSP for those of you who for whatever reason don't know, GSP is a is a you know he's a retired UFC champion. You know, like he's wow. he's a great fighter and he's a great guy. Like if you ever watched his fights, like he's just he's so humble and like he's just he, you you can't. Even as an American, like I couldn't not root for him just because he was so awesome, and just to see him get some kind of part in the MCU and like, and making Batroc like kind of cool. Yes. Um, I don't know. I love that. That was probably my favorite part. It was I. I love seeing GSP get to play Batroc again, and I hope, I hope he survives that fall. At he the definitely end. did. You yeah, think he so? Did. Yeah, because yeah, otherwise he, he would have just exploded, right? You know. Yeah, and they wouldn't have shown that he like jumped off. Mm-hmm. Like they did it on purpose, I feel like. I, I won't be surprised if he's like one of the people that ends up getting I, I, I still think there's gonna be people that obviously we know that there's people who are, have super strength. I wouldn't be surprised if you see him somehow get a little enhancement and maybe be a little more I mean he was already kickboxing he, uh, Captain America in that first one. He was. He could he have was. shield and everything. But I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a, a little more of a bump or something. I don't know. We'll see. But well, how did you guys feel about the their whole uh, the reasoning for the organization for doing what they're doing? Refresh me completely of like their full. Okay, I'm so glad you said that because I was going through and I was like, "What was yeah. the reason?" Well, there was oh there oh was, oh there because of the blip. That's right. The blip. Yeah, they, they think they everything no was borders. better before yeah. the blip. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Right. It it works for this. Like it's a reason to bring him back. So like, so now we're we're post the blood. We're post we're post the Thanos snatch. And like, let's let's be real. Like like people people are crazy. You know, like you know, there's there's some messed up people in this world. Like in in real life, um, I think that's a totally viable thing I can see happening. Because if half of the population disappeared, I mean, a that's devastating. But something the MCU did that the comics did not do is 
after the snap, stuff just stayed the same for five years or, or whatever it was in, in the comic books a little after the snap, like they resolved it in, in what, like, I felt like it was just a few days. Yeah. So there's gotta be some major consequences to just kind of after like so long, like you accept these people are gone. Right. In theory, you move on with your life. You know, we see Sam dealing with five years of no credit history and, and whatever else, you know, other people aged and you didn't, it's, it's messy. So like, I think it was, I I will admit, like, I think it's weird, you know, it's a weird thing. I wish they weren't dealing with, but I think it does make sense. That is a good point too, as well. Like the finances of half the world going away. Yeah. Those finances had to be absorbed into other spaces, right. Or other places. Because of all those like people that were there and all those accounts that were like operatives, do you know what I mean? To just go to other family members as if they died, as if it was like inheritances mm-hmm. or do you know what I mean? Like that was those, how were those funds dispersed and groups of people that absorbed all their funds? Like when those people came back, did they become terrorists? Do you know what I mean? Because the exactly type of thing too is what happens when you come back and everything that you had is gone? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Is that what's kind of happening here with this like flag smasher? Like they're, you said like they're the, you know, like that they are the people that liked it better when the people, when there was like fewer people, right? That's what mm-hmm. they're fighting yeah, so for. I think part of it also was they were saying how, how the world was like, it was more the world was without borders and stuff because of what happened. Cause I guess everyone was going through things. And now since everyone came back, everyone's back trying to go back to how everything used to be, where everyone's separated now and, and it's like my country and your country or... so i mean i don't know and, and like you guys said it's all weird i mean forget about the finances also like what if you you had a house and now you're you don't own that house anymore your house is gone you know because you yeah. obviously you were blipped so or i hate to say it but what if your or what if your significant other moved on yeah like right. that yeah dude like the, the world moved on with or without you type yeah. of thing i said too like lance is right like that house that you lived in you you like you know you come you you go home and it's no one it's not even your family there someone else is there moved on to <laughs> what what happened yeah, like Susan's over like your couple collection all of your stuff oh you yeah oh yeah them. no 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 oh my goodness there's... how do you replace that <laughs> yeah you you can I mean there's and that and that happens that had to have happened to, to several yes. people within the MCU like they lost their comic book collection or. Or, like how or many whatever. people went in the military and came home and their stuff was gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like to an extreme sense. But it's a, it's, it's a fascinating thing they're kind of touching on how far they can touch on to what life is like for people that came back from the blip that it's not so rosy for them now that they're back. And there's a certain amount of people who came back and died, unfortunately. So yes. even though half, half of the people were unsnapped, there's a certain percentage where like, cause they said like, if you were on an airplane, like oh, and you yeah. were snapped, that's where you returned. So that airplane's not there. So like that whole airplane of people just fell to the ocean or, or wherever. Yeah. You know, like, in the it air could or, even be like a, a nightcrawler thing. Like what if you were there, but now there's a building there. So you got blips in the oh, in yeah. between a wall. Oh my gosh. Or... That's so gross. Yeah. <laughs> like there's all these just instantly splatter. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I kind of want to yeah. see that addressed somewhere that would be to address that would be awesome and what the crazy thing is like people will be finding yeah. this years later like oh this person got blipped halfway in between this wall oh there's like, a skeleton in the wall that's place. your toilet's not clogged they just got blipped into the pipes <laughs> <laughs> gosh I, I don't even know whose property that kind of dark humor i guess that's deadpool right um yeah. i and i hate myself for saying that um so wow one how thing, weird speaking of people like dying one thing that I feel like they didn't address in the show is what is the explanation to the public about what happened to Captain America? Yes. Uh, were they, they going to say he just died yeah. in the fight against Thanos? Is that what they're going with? Because it was never addressed. I have, I have a question before we, we really splice this, this open. My first question is, is he dead or like, are they telling the public he's dead? Cause I didn't understand that. Was that a memorial? Cause it said remembering Steve Rogers. Yeah. 
was that clear to you guys? I don't, I don't know if he's, I don't know. I'm, I, it, I don't know if it was a memory thing or, or it was, I don't know. What do you think, Ken? Because if it was the retirement ceremony, don't you think Steve would be there to retire to say like that? Hey, you know, I went back, I lived my life. This is what I've always wanted. Almost like Steve would explain himself. Do you know what I mean? Right, That's but just how Steve Rogers to, is. No, they're not supposed to know that he went back, right? That's supposed to be a secret. Okay, Nobody's so supposed to know secret. that. So this has to be something about him. They being don't want. Yeah, they or, don't. They don't want to say like how they fixed it with time travel, right? Because then people start knowing true. they did that and they start messing up the timelines and. That's where Kane comes in, though. Yeah. No. And but I mean those that that groundwork I think is already. Israeli. I just wasn't sure if I was the only one who wasn't clear as to what they were yeah. saying. I don't believe he's dead, even if they're pretending he's dead. Well, if if Nick Fury's still up in space with the scrolls, okay, you know, is is Nick Fury really even dead too? Then as well, because he was by the snap, right? Wasn't wasn't Nick Fury? Didn't he die from the snap? Yeah, the first time around. But it, but it so, got unsnapped, so he's back. Yeah, so is he up in space with the scrolls and now Steve Rogers yes. doing a super soldier story? Well, like where, you know, uh, Steve Rogers is now the head of S.H.I.E.L.D., but S.H.I.E.L.D.'s defunct now, isn't it? We could be the head of S.W.O.R.D. Well, yeah, the head of S.W.O.R.D. Too. Well, first of all, I don't know. I don't know where S.W.O.R.D. stands in continuity right now. I know. I know what you're referring to, but because it, it, that's a really interesting point because, because we saw Steve fury Rogers. up there and that yeah. was sword and yeah. that's that was obviously what the monica rambo thing was that after the credit scene where it's like oh we heard you got grounded somebody wants to talk to you an old friend and she turns to a scroll and she points to space that's nick fury and, we, and he was the after the credit scene in homecoming right so he's alive yeah. I think that's sword. It's got to be sword. Is he the head of shield? I don't know. That's, that's interesting. Keeping him behind the, behind the scenes, because that's kind of similar to secret Avengers is what you're saying, right? Yes. Interesting. But he's also old man, Steve. Maybe, maybe they can yes. do both. I, I don't make know. sense. I mean, who wouldn't, who else would you want to be? The leader of Shield, besides Old Man Steve, who's been with, who now in this, you know, new Steve has been with Peggy her entire life, who's been running Shield. Yes. Wait a and second. He's just been hiding this entire time, right? And that's why also, and it also like people were saying when when she, uh, in in the Captain America, uh, film where he's at his little um, uh, memoriam and she's talking about. Oh, Captain America saved thousands of lives, and he also, you know, ended up saving the man who I ended up later marrying and becoming my husband. And people are just saying that she was referring to him because he went back in time, right? And and married him because he ended up saving, I guess, himself by coming back to ta- in time. And she in the MCU, Peggy founded Shield, so she already yes. had Shield connections. So if Steve. Okay, this is this is gonna get this is gonna get complicated. Yes. In this timeline, we now know so it's it's these threads, right? So it's the same continuity. So that means when he went back to return the infinity stones and live through it, that's that's an infinite loop. So that means by that logic, while we were watching um like the Avengers movie and Winter Soldier, the Steve Rogers from the future had already come back and was there simultaneously with young Steve no. secretly living with Peggy. Yes. No. Yes. Why not? Because that's that's how they explain time work. It's it's the same timeline. Removing the Infinity Stones creates a, a different timeline. So she was married to Steve that whole time. And Steve, young Steve, well, yes, did not yes, know sorry, that. I, I, yes. Okay. So Steve was in hiding the whole time. Yes. Because he knew the other Captain America was there. Yep. So, but he couldn't interfere. From, from the he just can't do anything. Yeah. He just can't interfere yeah. at all. He's got to be a ghost this whole right. time. Right. 
Yeah, he has to be. They even said that because or else it would make a different it would just make a, it would create a, a multiverse. It wouldn't change anything. It would just create a multiverse by their time travel logic for the MCU. Gosh, it this... wasn't that you, you can't go back in time and change anything. You would just create a multiverse if you did anything. The only problem with that is, is, is that it's that infinite loop. And that has to be the correct thing is to go back and fix the snap. But by, by Steve always, yeah. always having to go back, that's the only way this timeline is preserved, but that technically should be screwing it up no matter what, just by being there. So that should be enough for Kang to, to be upset. Like you can't stay here. And and technically too, you had Captain America battling Captain America in yep. Endgame. So that shows they can both exist at the same time period and not under, exactly understand what's going on. But the one that does understand the one that did go back at the start of the movie, he understands everything that happened because he lived it. Correct. Well, okay. So here's here's what's interesting about about that that specific scene you're referring to. What else happened downstairs was Loki got the tesseract. Yes. So that, that's well, that, that, that splits that, off. Yeah, that, they, that when they, they did that 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 turned into a multiverse, that whole thing. So that's that becomes a new timeline. So so that that Captain America fighting Captain America did not happen in real continuity because of Loki, because they, they failed that mission. Okay. Cause they ended up having to go either, even farther back, back to, to the back like twenties or whatever it mm-hmm. was. So to, that's, to get the test right. that's the difference so, between so, so, that scene and Tony and Howard. Okay. Cause and he and can just go that in passing, you know? So just different. How would you say branches of the timelines? that were fractured off by them trying to go back and get all the gemstones. So those other realities are still going, in other words, then? So the multiple the, realities are still running and uh, coexistence with each other moving forward. The, the one where Loki gets the Tesseract, is so, which is the same one as when Captain America fights himself. Um, so is Loki in that reality? Yeah, that's the yeah, reality. That's what that show, that's yeah. what that show is. Okay, so where it's, that it's a separate reality altogether. That's not going to connect in with with the rest of the MCU. I don't think I don't think that's part true. I think it's going to eventually connect in because the whole the show is about the time variance authority, okay, and about him messing up. So they're either going to somehow have him fix it or put him back to where he belongs, or or he who escaped. knows what, or or he escapes and just makes it even crazier, right? Yeah. Who knows? So there's there's already the seeds for lots of crazy things happening. Like Loki screwed up that timeline and he's in trouble with the Time Man's authority. And who knows? Who knows what he's going to do outside of time and everything else? You have Wanda who wants her kids, but her kids are technically should be from the future or whatever they're going to explain. But she's already starting to mess with things and she's trying to find them. Um, you have, you have the blip, you have whatever you have them solving the blip, which who knows if this is something that's okay or not. Um, we have Mysterio talking about the multiverse, even though he was full of it, there's gotta be more to it than that. What else? Oh, in the first Dr. Strange movie, right. They're talking about there is, there's the multiverse. Like, um, there's, there's a lot of crazy things happening and I, I'd be really surprised if we don't get something like battle world yeah, or our, something like that. It's like, it's, it's, it's the road to maybe cleaning up continuity where everything's going forward after all the continuity options looking at and then, okay, cool. Here's the new universe moving forward after all the different things that we explored kind of like what they did with secret wars and the comic series man it was secret wars was the multiple multiverses all together on yeah and it was like every different crossover that mark did was a different or less country inside a battle world but they do the same type of thing connection wise it's like that it's every reality that they've opened up 
because of what happened when they're trying to go back in time that everything's got to kind of it's funneled into what will be the future of the Marvel Universe in the cinematic universe after this is all said and done. And two more things that are that are a little messed up that are happening too. And I and I feel like a lot of people are glossing over this uh in regards to everything I I had just said and, and what you're saying right now. The current Gamora is twenty fourteen yeah. Gamora and current Nebula killed past Nebula. Yes, which is cool. Come on, that that why yes. would that not split something? Because now yes. if Nebula is not around in her specific timeline, like she killed herself, that should split. That should split something too, right? Because yeah. now now she's dead. And she well, he also she, killed Thanos and his entire army, and you killed twenty fourteen Thanos, right? Yes. But that would affect that time. That that's that timeline. But, it wouldn't but affect MCU. It, but it's the same timeline. But killing that Thanos, that now Just Thanos went to the future, and now that cre- that has to create uh, another even offshoot, because yeah. he just he just kills and he never gets the infinite or never does the infinity gauntlet that that way in that specific timeline that he was supposed to within the MCU reality. So like there's there's three different things that really got screwed up so this is gonna be messy it's gonna get even more messy because that's the two canes coming over in ant-man and so based off of what we're seeing so far we're probably gonna see even more reality timeline start because he said too loki the time variants are gonna try fixing it are they fixing it or is it gonna make it even more fractured i think it's yeah i think it's all dr strange's fault is the question because he he made sure that this was the one right that happened. This is the one outcome where we win, but it made so many different multiverses now. Interesting. Like, in the end, like in like ten years from now, when it's all said and done, was it the right move? You know. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be. Yeah, go on. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be fun because obviously we, you know dealing with universal threats now we're dealing with time threats it's going to be fun because i said too it's going to be back to the future on steroids we're going to see i think so many different things repercussions as you said too butterfly effects much less kind of an age of ultron it's kind of ironic too we go back to that butterfly again Mm -hmm. and the butterflies affecting of like in scarlet witch wandavision it's like the whole Marvel Universe is dealing with a butterfly effect of every decision that happens. They thinking they're saving the universe. It's opening new doors of what's going to happen next. Wow. And the crazy part is, is that that's happening, even though the whole theory of their time travel is that they're not affecting their own timeline. Like if you go back into the past, like they even said, if you killed baby Thanos, it, he still did the snap. It's still going to happen uh... either way. So you can't go back in time and change anything. But when you change something, it creates an alternate timeline, like you're saying. So oh. the butterfly effect is having an effect, just not in your timeline. But elsewhere. since people See, so can, yes. since it's happening elsewhere, people can come and try to be like, hey, what are you doing? Yes. So really, it's just the problem is the ripple effect that they didn't realize that was going to happen because they don't. Ca- Obviously, it's like one of those things like, oh, I don't care what happens in another universe it's like, as long as mine's good. But you're going to care when Kang comes by like, yo. Like you just made like seven different timelines by doing this, and they're, and all, they're all they're all really horrible. bad. They're, they're all really worse bad. than what happened <laughs> when Thanos did the snap. What are you doing? Yes. Wow. Wow. I uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. I was like, uh, I don't want to do a fucking Winter Soldier episode, but this this got great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all so mind blowing. So I'm saying to the cinematic universe has got so many options, multiverse idea. It, it's just the beginning. I said too, we're only in the first two TV shows, and we're already like, "Oh my gosh, dude, what just happened at the end of Endgame?" And it's supposed to be the Endgame, but it's actually the Pandora's box that just got opened up. I mean, yeah, it was the Endgame to those first three Marvel seasons. We'll, we'll just call them because they were the phases, right? Yeah. So now, now going forward, we have Disney Plus, and more than more than having Disney Plus, I mean, aside from the weird stuff with Spider Man. Marvel finally has the rest of their characters aside from Spider-Man. And like, and now that we've done all this Avenger stuff, we're, we're getting into the multiverse 
and we get to play in the Fantastic Four and X Men sandboxes too. And yes. Fantastic Four isn't exciting because of the Fantastic Four. And I think I've said this before. Fantastic Four is exciting because of all the other Fantastic Four stuff like Galactus and the Silver Surfer and Uatu and um, gosh, Dr. Doom, Dr. Doom the uh, ultimate the nullifier, zone. the negative zone, the quant- yeah. the quantum realm, like, like all of the other mythologies is what's, is what's really fun. Um, and I'm very excited. All the Fox properties this is going to be great. Spider-Man with a paper bag. Spider-Man <laughs> with a paper, my favorite, my favorite Spider-Man costume. I mean, how can you, how can you go wrong with that? Gosh, I hope oh, we get that gosh. someday. I, I hope Tom Holland can, can hold on just a little longer just so we can get just one I scene love- with paper bag Spider-Man. Paper bag Spider-Man was the worst thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I know Ken, Ken is like, no, it's black suit Spider-Man. What are you saying? No, well, the, the paper bag Spider-Man, the, the troll way out of him not having a costume after bringing the symbiote. Yes. To no, the I know. Building. Yeah. So yeah. that kind of like to me, it's like that, that ended such a great era. Of Peter Parker with a new costume. Yes. And Johnny Storm even taped the kick me sign on his back as he's web yes. swinging around yep. town. That's right. Yeah, dude, that was the first Spider-Man comic I ever bought as a kid. So that one, you know, like it's mixed feelings about how I feel oh, about Brown Bag Spider-Man. Oh, I see. It's 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 yeah. con- it's it's uh, circumstantial for you. That's leaving that. Yeah, so much bad so much in your mouth. I can see Brown Bag Spider-Man being really enjoyable, funny thing for everybody that uh, did not live that back in 1984. Did I <laughs> did I tell you guys? Um, like I was I was a little late to the to the to the Sony PS4 Spider-Man game. What was it called? Just was it just Spider Man? Yeah, Spider Man. Anyway, the the most recent Spider Man game. Um, there was all these all these costume and stuff. And as as soon as I unlocked Paper Bag, Fantastic Four Suit Spider Man, I played the entire game with that with costume. Him? How'd the brown bag not fly off his head? <laughs> right. I mean, yes. I mean, that's. Did you have like little like he taped he taped yeah like he taped it. Uh, double sided, double sided tape onto his onto his forehead the, until he sweat too the, much. The costume I always used was it was twenty ninety nine, and um, and then there was a comic one, which was crazy. Yes, where cool. you're, the, you're it looked just like the comic, and it it was kind of it would get a little trippy. Um, but then the DLCs, I don't I don't know if you played them, but the DLCs. No, cool. not not yet. But I mean, obviously, obviously, like as far as serious costumes go, black suit Spider-Man is the best and that wasn't an option. And I'm just going to say spoil alert, but if you haven't played the game yet, this is on you because, oh yeah, because of the end, um, you know why that they didn't have um, the black suit available in this uh, particular game. Um, what was cool though, in the DLC, you get a pretty cool costume with yeah. uh you're playing with the black cat and she gives you a costume and it's, that's literally all I wear now. If I ever play that game, it's, 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 what? it's like a black, it's completely black. It's a, it's a costume that black cat gave Spider-Man. Yeah. But it's so, it's so, good. it's cool. It's so cool. Yeah. Does it make you look like black cat, right? No, I okay. wish it did. Okay. Or else, I mean, yeah, I was hoping she could be a playable. Oh my gosh. She was a playable character. I'll be the greatest game ever. Oh, that's something that the games have been missing, but at least they have done black cat on like, all of the movies. Um, and it's almost like the curse of the black cat, because every time one of these franchises is going to do black cat, they get rebooted. Oh, yes. you know, the, the Tobey Maguire ones, the Spider-Man four was going to have black cat and vulture. They got rebooted. Um, Spider-Man two with Andrew Garfield introduced Felicia Hardy and they got rebooted. And then I'll even take this as far as saying, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming had a character that was confirmed as Felicia Hardy and Disney and Sony got into a fight and and they, they took Tom Holland out of the MCU. But luckily that time it got resolved. So I guess third time's a charm. And then they did, they were supposed to do the movie uh, with Black Cat and Dazzler and it just got, it just, I think they just stopped. They just yeah. threw it away. Um, so, I mean, not that I wanted Sony to do that because I felt no. like that was, that's how you're going to ruin it. You yeah. know, if there's a one way to ruin it, that's it. So that four or five tries now, then is that the fourth try or the fifth try? Um, yeah, four because uh, Toby McGuire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, but that one's still on the table. 
Uh, but yes, that that uh, silver and black movie. Um, I don't know what happened to that because that was supposed to be just about Silver Sable and and Black Cat, which is really weird. Not just introducing them in Spider Man first. I don't care if they get their own spinoff. I think that's great. Um, but she she's got to appear in a Spider Man yeah. thing first. Well, maybe they're doing the whole thing. It's like they're giving you eight teases and on the ninth live. <laughs> so, you know, she's gonna, so it's she's gonna, gonna be. It's going to be 30 more years before we see. I guess it's fitting. <laughs> She's a tease, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's yes. uh, it's living up to it's the coming. Yeah. I think they don't want you to expect it when it actually does hit. So, the lucky day for all the fans. Finally, we get to see Black Cat on screen. Yeah, it shouldn't have taken this long. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens when it does. Hopefully, it is in the MCU. <clears throat> All right. So, anything else before we wrap this up? I I mean, I had one thing I wanted to say, but like, it's I'm, I probably just shouldn't say it. So, well, now you have to now you have to say it. Okay. So, like, <laughs> I, I keep seeing these these videos because like, of of like the Flash for whatever reason, like they just get randomly popping up, and I keep like watching for a couple seconds, and it got me thinking, like. I'm pretty sure whenever they show like the Flash go do something, right? Like, like in like the Batman. You remember when they first show him like throws like where Batman throws his little, uh, you know, thing, and, and then he goes and grabs it and whatever, right? When the Flash moves, um, in the movies, how they shoot it, it basically looks like nobody else is moving, and he's just like walking around, and like nothing's really moving because he's moving so fast, which makes sense, right? Because he moves the speed of light, but. Unlike what Marvel does, where like, you know, like Quicksilver moves, like when Quicksilver's moving, like his hair's moving, his his clothes are like getting all wrinkled. When the Flash is moving in all the shows, there's like nothing happening to his clothes, his hair. He just grabs it, stays in place. And then when he stops moving super fast, like everything's like then everything starts going. But like. Like, shouldn't his hair just be like all messed up? I just moved the speed of light around a room like 35 times. My hair, my clothes should like do something. Like, I just thought about it. like how they shoot it, I feel like is just not good. Like, as far, especially like, shouldn't, isn't this like what you have like producers, like directors on the, like, there's, there's people hired to like watch for these things, no, on the set to like make sure, hey, like this makes sense. Like, like, hey, like, no, there's no science behind it, you're saying. Yeah, there's nothing to it. My only... Go on. No, go on. no gravity, but like no explanation of unstable molecules. Like, you know, the Fantastic Four outfits have unstable molecules. That's why, you know, Johnny Storm can go into Human Torch and turn back into normal thing. It didn't burn off the clothes. Right. Type of thing. With Flash, they never really explained anything like that. He just wears like a regular outfit, right? There's never been an explanation that his suit is modified to deal with the amount of gravity push that wouldn't crush him when he moves that fast too as well because of the pressure of the suit tightening on him as he moves at the speed of light well also he's also doing this in regular clothes in some of these clips like yeah. he's just like dressed in like a jacket and jeans and just like how is it how, if he's moving that fast i mean the jeans should like just fall off him. like i mean i just don't yeah he would he would run through it yeah i I don't have an argument, but my only my only half argument is his face and everything should be fine because he's already we know he's resistant to whatever. But I guess by what you're trying to describe is like the Quicksilver effects versus those flash effects you're describing because uh, I, I haven't watched Justice League or, or anything. Uh, but I guess if his hair is not moving. Maybe like things like that are the problem. That's what I'm saying. Things like that is what bothers me. Yeah. Now I like it's <laughs> kind of hard to argue also because it's all one. It's all theories because technically we've never moved the speed of light. So who knows if you're moving so fast that it's like becomes like a vacuum and nothing really happens. Ooh. If that's an argument, I have no idea. Ooh, there I don't you really go. Know. You just you just came up know. with a good BS I'm, excuse. I just BSed it. Yeah, but I don't know if that's actually a thing. I don't you know. just I'm want guessing. them to say it. I, yeah, exactly. I just want an explanation, then I'm fine. That's, well, I, I mean, has anybody watched the Snyder Cut? Uh, did they explain it? No, I actually want to, but I was going to watch it at some point this week. It's just hard to to be like, hey, I'm going to dedicate my next four hours of my busy day to watch <laughs> this movie that might be horrible. 
Yeah. You know? I know. I'm I'm right I'm right there with you. Well if you qualify. <laughs> I don't have a chance of four hours of me understanding how bad this is going. <laughs> I mean, I've I've heard good things. Um, I, People said I, it was good. I was I wanted to see it, but I ever since they announced it, there's like every other. I think I said it last week. Every other news article on Super Hype was news about the Snyder Cut and what they're doing and this interview and that interview, and just everything became so inundated with all the stuff about the Snyder Cut. I was just, I was so over it. I was so sick of hearing it. I don't want to watch it. And I feel like I nothing's really, a surprise anyway. I was really proud of us. That, like, I thought we were going to do a full episode of doing a podcast that has to talk about comics and pop culture and not touch on the Zack Snyder. <laughs> I thought it would have been like an amazing podcast of us, like the only pop culture podcast in America that does not commentate on the Justice League Zack Snyder cut. So I think that makes us the one in one million podcasts, however yeah. many that are out there, that I can guarantee everybody was breaking down. With the well, I'll show. tell you what, though. Out of all the pop culture podcasts, I almost guarantee you we will be, when we, I think we will end up watching the Snyder Cut. So I would say we will be the only ones probably who will be able to give you their opinion of the Zack Snyder Cut without having seen the Josh Whedon Cut. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Because <laughs> I haven't seen the first Me Justice either. either. And, and I actually want to watch the the Joss Whedon after, so that way I could be like, "Hey, I saw this one first, and then I saw that one, and here is my opinion." That's I'm, true. That would I'm, be like the reverse. It's almost yeah. like what we talked about earlier with the timelines. We fractured the DC watching <laughs> Justice League <laughs> timeline. <laughs> like we just did our own end game with the Justice. League. It's, that's that's really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's also unmotivating just to be like, like, what's canon? Well, this is not canon. Like, okay, well, why am I gonna then? Why am I gonna watch this for four hours? Like, I I feel like they don't, they don't even know, and I also feel like they might just change their mind. Yeah. So, like, what's also weird is I what Zack Snyder said about like what his plans were for the third Justice League movie. I don't know if you heard about that. Yes, I thought that was I thought that was really weird, and I think he would have ruined everything anyway. So none of this even matters. Yeah. Was there a second Justice League movie? I don't get it. Is this well, supposed he, to be the second Justice League? He movie? had. No, this was his first one, but yeah. it was to set up, he had a trilogy in mind, but it was going to follow this whole thing where uh, Bruce Wayne falls in love with Lois Lane and they have a kid and was it like Batman dies and their kid becomes the next Batman? Yeah. 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 See, like, Ken, Ken is like dying here. Like, you guys, you guys <laughs> Sorry, can't see dude. him, but I can. Well, it's like, well, it's, it, it's giving me headaches. Think about the DC like multiverse. They, they will do anything just to try to flesh out a story. Hmm. Like I said, too, we just saw it on Superman and Lois I was talking about. You know what? I've never seen anywhere before where Clark Kent, Lois Lane have not much one kid, but two kids. A hmm. super son is the first kid they've ever had in DC Comics continuity that I know of since post-Crisis. Before hmm. Crisis, I can't, I can't confirm because the Golden Age and Silver Age, they were just doing stories just to do stories. I mean, you know, Superman yeah. and Batman's kids were hanging out together trying to see who could throw the ball further and stupid crap like that. And But ever since Crisis, they've stayed true to the fact of like, this is our timeline going forward. Yeah. And then doing the, obviously the CW show, cartoon universe, obviously I think kicked off the fact of we don't need to be locked into our post-crisis universe anymore. Mm-hmm. And they acknowledge the DC animated series is actually the whole DC universe. Mm-hmm. The DC movie universes are all part of their same universes. Superman from the 1970s is part of the DC universe. Batman 66 is part of the DC universe. The Batman, he'd be starting the new Batman 89 comics that are coming out next month. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're doing Batman 89 is now part dc universe yeah. there's there's no commitment to anything being somewhat important i hate saying that for dc fans out there i know it's great to have all those different options and opportunities out there but mm. there's no nothing that you can lynch on to is like this is the main dc universe anymore yeah no no 616 continuity if you will yeah. just because of how how jumbled you know it's kind of yeah and i got that and that's that's what made it hard for me um to really get into dc comics even though like there are 
our stories and characters I like. And I, and I know we, we maybe we give DC a hard time sometimes. Um, but DC's I mean, that's what makes a it lot hard. Of great characters. It's yeah. just hard the new fan to know where to follow. Them. Yeah. And Which that's starter, what's important. What's not important. Read. And that's what I think like the movies need to start getting right is like, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like there's a lot of great stories to draw from. Right. Just do it. You don't have to make up something where Batman and Lois Lane have a kid that becomes the next main Batman for whatever reason, because Ben Affleck's Batman within this continuity has only done Batman versus Superman and a justice league movie aside from some cameos. So like, why didn't we have a good run of Bruce Wayne before we pass the mantle on to, to whoever I don't even care. Because I know other people have been Batman, but you don't have a definitive Batman story with it here, let alone Batman versus Joker or anything. And what's the point of Batman marrying Lois Lane? I mean, I don't understand any significance of that. I mean, the Batman Catwoman, yeah, that makes sense because that's where Huntress came out of play. Yeah. In an alternate reality, you know, it's like that. Okay, cool. We have a character that was designed out of another reality that makes sense of that character. Yeah. Well, you know, did, did Superman not meet lois lane or you know it's you have to deviate so many different things in your storytelling to try to make that work it's just a, it's a one-off story and that's all you get out of it. well it's because superman died and oh superman died okay well, oh i see and that, so oh, that's that where superman was dead that's where they're trying to fit it in i think so so i i don't know i agree completely stupid it would make so. more sense for lois lane to marry lex Luthor by whatever randomness brainiac yeah. character villain of superman marrying lois lane that she even know was villain until superman got back and then it's like oh no it's like that the threat of you know this character that lois lane married losing her back to superman turns him into a villain you know almost i don't know as the two there's so many different other things that i could see them doing rather than like let's just have bruce wayne marry lois lane because that just is convenient especially after he was trying to beat up superman and like Oh well, you beat up Superman. Yeah. I'm gonna go with the uh, yeah. Oh gosh, uh, yeah. I'm, all right. I'll I'll just I'll just stop right there. I don't want to. I'm sorry, wanna... I didn't need to go off. <laughs> Where in the world would that make sense? To me? Anyway, so yes, Lance. In you know, it was a long way of saying yes. We did we did hear about what they wanted to do with this uh, Zack Snyder stuff uh, going forward, but I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I feel uh, bad about mentioning the whole flash thing. It just went downhill. This yeah. Guy, so <laughs> talk about but anything else about captain and America and I mean, uh, Falcon and winter soldier before we wrap this up. I'm excited for the next five episodes. Yes. I mean, these shows are kind of like the gift of gold right now for us not having any Marvel movies in the past year and a half. I haven't even thought about the fact we haven't seen a Marvel movie since Spider-Man home or far from home. Yeah, that was a long time and ago. And the stuff is filled in that gaps well that when movies do come back again, it's just, just think about how awesome movies are going to be with how well they're doing with these TV shows. Eternals, you know, like, wasn't that supposed to be out last year or by now too as well? I mean, Eternals and these, Black Widow. Yeah, Eternals and Black Widow. And, you know, it's just, it's it's good to have this stuff here or else we would be kind of going like, are you serious, dude? When's the next Marvel product going to come out? And Disney Plus kind of opened up that reality for us to have our characters we've enjoyed for the past 15 years still with us. Yep. And Spider-Man and Venom. Yes. We're going to go this year. So is that is Venom coming out this year still? Yeah, they, they said it was coming out. It got December delayed. It got November? delayed. It got delayed till September. And is September. Morbius still coming out? The what? Morbius movie? That's that's also delayed. I don't I don't remember the date. Um, well, yeah, I mean things are always changing, so so we'll have to see. Uh, I'm really hoping that Black Widow still comes out in May, and I really hope they do that thing on Disney Plus where you can just pay thirty dollars. And I and I really hope this becomes a really comfortable precedence because I'd rather watch it on my couch and surround sound on a big TV than go to the movie. Like I'll, I'll pay why, the thirty bucks. And why isn't PlayStation Network thought about putting like Venom movie on something that you can download off the PlayStation Network? Yeah, Do they have a the they have a live events movie. viewer, so they they already have that infrastructure in place. Uh-huh. Um, but I mean, 
the conspiracy theorist in me says maybe there there's a bigger thing to the D, uh, Disney uh, Sony plan. So like they can't release these out of order because something's going to happen with the Spider-Man movie that sets up. Okay. Sony's going to be over here doing this and we're going to be over here doing this. Maybe it's Peter Parker, or Miles Morales, and they're just going to split off and whatever. I don't know. We will, we will see what happens. Uh, but before we run too long, that's about all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you all so much for listening to nightcap chat. If you don't already follow us on social media, we're on uh, Facebook and Twitter. That's at nightcap chat, all one word and nightcap underscore chat on Instagram. If you do enjoy the show as well, um, you can leave those reviews, especially on platforms like iTunes. If you're enjoying it, leave five stars, tell us what you love. Uh, and uh, let us know what you think on uh, social media about Falcon and Winter Soldier. What you think of the first episode? Again. Thanks, you guys, again, for listening. It's uh, always great coming on and doing these shows with you guys. And looking forward to talking more Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, you can find me at drawntocomics.com on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and in the shop in downtown Glendale, 5801 West Glendale Avenue. Thank you very much, guys. And you can catch me on Twitch at Tales of Lance and Twitter and Instagram at Tales of Lance. We appreciate you all listening. We love you. Be safe. And we'll catch you all next week. Have a great night.